Hello, hello, Internet. Ben here again. Just 30 seconds ago, I finished recording a previous video. So the previous video was explaining how I'm going to code this park and why. I will give a super, super brief overview of that. Oh my gosh, I have a cat trying to get on my lap. Um, come on, Mia. Come here. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I was going to try and explain this setup to you, but it will be impossible. It would be better if I had a camera, and I don't, so never mind. Um, so anyway, the last video is a, is a full explanation of like what I was thinking, why, how SciPets uh, inspired this, what things I didn't like about SciPets that I want to fix here, all that kind of stuff I go into in the last video. This video is going to be about coding. Um, but super briefly, this is how park events are on SciPets. Um, players host them. Uh, they say, I want this to require 12 pets, um, and here's the fee for, for entry fee, here's the prizes, here's level range, right? A player selects all this stuff with a form, um, fills it out, and then other people can sign up. I'm not going to do that. And again, the reasons are going to be in the previous video if you're interested. What I'm going to code instead is just list out your pets here, and then let you choose, this is the park event this is the type of event I want my pet to, choose, to sign up for. So you'll say like Roy wants to do a kinball event and Malik wants to do an archery event, whatever. And then every 5, 10, 15 minutes, I don't know, I'll figure out the interval later. That's less important. But on some interval, the game will then just look at all the pets in the game and say, ooh, look, 12 pets wanted to play kinball. Bam, let's make a kinball game happen. Oh, six pets want to do an archery you know, I'd prefer 10, but last interval I checked, there were still only six, and, and we're still at six now, so eh, let's just do it. Let's just do it with six, even though it's not the optimal number, right? So I can get those kind of smart behaviors in. So what I'm going to work on now, though, uh, before doing that, is just kind of the UI of, like, here are my pets. Here's an event I want it to sign up for. Let's, you know, say, yes, you know, Malik wants to do an archery competition, whatever. And then that's it. And we'll have all that in the database and it will be stored, but it won't actually happen. So the actual happening I'll do later. Maybe I'll split that up into another video. Maybe I'll just do it on my own. I don't know. Um, but for now, and I've just noticed that my cables are all crazy cabled, cabled, sorry, tangled here. Here, hold on, I'm going to split these up. My voice will probably be weird. Um, is this the sort of thing I should restart recording for? Nah, I'm not doing it. All right, so. Problem solved, crisis averted. Um, so let's just start coding that UI. I think in this case, I've kind of talked about before how sometimes I start with the data on the back end, sometimes I start with the UI. One way or the other, just kind of depends. I already like did a bunch of stuff on the back end trying to set up park events to be like they are in in, in classic SciPets. Trashed all that. I'm sick of the back end. <laughs> that's my that's my justification this time. I'm going to start with the UI this time, um, and, and maybe partly because this really is a UI focused design. Like again, previous side pets was let's make a thing. The problem I want to solve though is I don't want players to have to be like, oh, there aren't any park events appropriate for my level at the fee I want, you know, of the type I want for the skills of my pet. You know, I want players to worry about that. What's the experience for the player? I want the player to just say, X pet wants to do Y thing done and for it to just happen for them, right? And them to not have to worry about it. So let's focus on that user experience. Let, we'll make the user experience first. So. Um, this is the app, perfect. This is the front end. And you'll notice I'm call I've still got the project called like SciPets app and SciPets API. Um, I knew I wasn't going to call it SciPets, but I didn't have a name yet when I started coding it. So I just called it SciPets. Then I was like, ah, Maslow's Pets? Don't really like it, but at least that gives me a domain name. Um, and then now it's Poppy Seed Pets, and, and that's it. Eventually I'll rename everything, and everything will say, like, I think the database is called Maslow's Pets. And the code is called SciPets, and the game is actually called Poppy Seed Pets, right? So it's a, it's kind of a naming mess right now. But I'll, I'll get that stuff sorted out. Some of that's so easy. I should just do it and take ten minutes with like, or less, with thirty seconds of downtime for you guys or something. So whatever, no one would even notice. I could just do it. Um, anyway, let's start coding this thing. So this is the park page. I had all this nonsense. Let's not even worry about it. Um, what I'm going to want to do first is just list over every pet. So um, let pet of pets. What are pets? We don't actually have them on this page. Um, we need to get all the pets from the user. I think are they on the user? No, I think we have to do like a like a lookup on the pets. So this dot pets equals this API get, and let's go and look at my uh, API. Um, and again, I've kind of mentioned. I don't know how programming savvy you particular viewer are, um, but we've got this API on the back end that you could poke at. You don't have to play SciPets using, sorry, 
poppy seed pets. You don't have to play poppy seed pets using the website. You could, if you wanted, poke directly at these URLs. It would be a very unfriendly experience. Um, although I was talking a little bit about bots in uh, the last video about why I'm doing all this. Uh, one of the reasons is bots were making park events on, on SciPets because the game wasn't doing it for them, right? They, they were solving a legit problem. Um, you could totally use the API to do some more efficient botting if you wanted. It's a problem I'll worry about later. In some cases, it's okay. Um, I think there are ways to not mind bots, but bots can cause problems. Oftentimes, performance, we're dealing with that at work too. Like our site just gets taken offline for minutes at a time because bots hammer the living crap out of it. It's crazy. Uh, anyway, um, someone else who knows more about Amazon than I do is going to solve that and then that'll be great. Anyway, uh, let's uh, look at the pet controller. So this is what I wanted. I knew there was something like URL that gets all the pets. I didn't know what it was. So it's, it's this guy. So we want to get um, pet my, uh, that will get all the pets. We can subscribe um, and it's going to give us some data. And you know, I probably have some code already that gets this. And um, this is something I could code a little better. And maybe I'm now at the point where I want to. Um, so far, I've been doing all the API calls pretty manually by just saying, this is the URL I want. Here's the kind of data I happen to know this URL will return, right? But there's nothing that, that tells you, um, which is why I'm copying it, because I don't remember. I could do a better thing and start making um, uh, functions really be a service um, where I just say, hey, get pets, and it handles all this complicated nonsense for me. But I have this is only like this is the first or as you can see this is the second time I've ever looked at this URL right so it's like once there's no reason to make a function really twice uh, maybe I should three times for sure once it gets to three times on any of these URLs I'll start breaking stuff out into into uh, functions but and that's an interesting call too because up front I probably know that I am going to want um, like some helper functions like that because I know the game is going to get bigger. It's really easy, uh, kind of on the flip side, to just go like, oh, I think I'm going to do this 100 times, therefore I'm going to make this super complicated, you know, write all this code, do all this stuff, and then it turns out you do it twice, and you did all that work for nothing, right? So there's there's definitely a balance there to strike on, like, making a fancy system that does a lot of work for you is cool, but only if you're actually going to use it. <laughs> and it's really easy to just make a cool system because it feels clever and, and you think you're helping yourself when in fact you're not. So this though I think is a case where I probably could have taken the initiative and been like, yeah, this game's going to get bigger. I'm going to want to not have to copy paste these lines of code, right? I mean, this could all be one line of code if I had this in a function and then I wouldn't have to worry like, oh, is it a my pet serialization group or is it a, is it in the user object, right? Like those questions I was just asking right now on screen because I don't remember. Um, <laughs> that's another hint. If I can't remember, probably it should be in a function that's easier to remember. Um, but anyway, so let's make the pets uh, it's a list of pets, as we can see here. Um, and then the thing that I like to do oftentimes is we say, right, loading is false. Um, actually, we should start loading to be true. There isn't going to be a search. This was left over, so I was again thinking you would like search for park events in the same way that was happening here. You could say, oh, I want to only find dance manias for all of my pets, or actually only for I used to call this pet square square because uh, back in the day when Unicode was less well supported, oftentimes Chinese characters would just come through as unknown characters as squares. So um, when Unicode was, I don't want to say first, but was really kind of gaining some more traction on the, on the web, I made this pet name to test it. But on some devices, it would still come up as squares. And I don't know, I think I looked up like the Chinese word for crystal or something like that. Um, but anyway... I just call this pet square square, and apparently that's drilled into my brain because I still remember that, and I haven't looked at SciPets in this level of detail in a long time. Like every now and again, I would log in and be like, oh, what's up? Oh, look, it's the ice cream man. That's fun. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I was thinking I was going to have this kind of interface, so that's why I had that do search method there. I'm not going to have it. Don't need it. Uh, but what I do want to say is that the site should display as loading until we have all the pets. So once we have all the pets, I'm going to say, nope, we're done loading. Um, and then on the park side, what I tend to do is we have a little thing that says if we're loading, then we're going to show loading. And I made a little, um, now we should see it, I made a little component just to show like this little bouncy loading throbber basically. So I can just throw that anywhere I want on the site. Um, 
whatever. It's not like a super fancy thing to do. It's a pretty obvious thing to do, honestly. You're like, yeah, I need to show that loading throbber a lot. I might as well make it a component. Um, but anyway, uh, that's how that works. Um, and then only if you're not, or sorry, when you're done. So we'll say uh, if it's not loading, then we do everything else, right? So, um, and there's a lot of reasons to do that. One is just so that players understand what, what in the world is going on. They're like, why do I not see anything yet? The other reason is that if you try to do logic on some variables that aren't set yet, like this pets thing, if I tried to loop over pets before it was assigned, I'd probably get like weird JavaScript errors. And some JavaScript errors will cause the entire site to just stop working. Um, I mean, general rule of thumb, don't operate on data that isn't ready yet, <laughs> right? Um, so that's what I use. And, and this pattern is everywhere. This like loading trues, okay, done loading. Um, and, and that's been useful for me so far because if I had, I was using it before for that search, you know, thinking that I was going to have a form like this. So the idea is, was going to be when you hit search, it could say dot, 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 loading, dot, dot, dot. Okay, here they are, right? So that, that would just be built in. I'd already have this loading variable and could keep reusing it for that purpose. Um, so it's interesting. In some ways, I feel a little weird doing this. Like every single, com not every single, but, but tons of pages and other components, I have like this loading thing set up. I don't know. I can't tell if it's a good design pattern or not, but it's one that's been working for me so far, so I've been doing it. I guess what I'm saying is I don't 100% recommend doing this. I'm not saying gospel truth, this will do everything you want. <laughs> it's possible this will break things. I don't know why I use like religious phrases like that, because I'm whatever. Um, but, but anyway, it's just ingrained in society, I guess, for better or worse. Um, but uh, anyway, so... Um, yes, what was I saying? I don't know. I'm not saying that this loading thing is 100% great. I, I feel, I'm feeling a little, I feel a little shaky about this implementation is what I'm saying. It hasn't failed me yet, but I just kind of came up with it on my own out of nowhere. Eh, so, you know, if it turns out and it breaks things for you, it doesn't work for X, Y, or Z reason. Um, this is my disclaimer. <laughs> it's not my fault. Um, I, uh, if only I could do a better, like, I don't know, whatever. It's not my fault. It just reminds me of, a. Uh, not Indiana Jones, Star Wars. Anyway, so uh, got our pets, got our loading. Have they quoted that in the recent uh, like fan servicey Star Wars movies? It's been so long. It's surely someone has said it's not my fault. I don't know. Anyway, um, they, right? They must have. They, they've done everything else. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not coding right now. We're rambling about things. We're rambling about culture and Star Wars. Um, I almost said Star Trek, which is an embarrassing mistake to make. I like them both, in case you're curious. They're, they're very, very different creatures. Um, I, I, I love Next Generation and 4, 5, 6 very dearly. <laughs> Most of the other things can uh, take them or leave them. Um, anyway, uh, this loading, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> this loading is false. All right, we're going to loop over all the pets. We're going to list all the pets. So I have like a pet appearance. Um, yeah, pet appearance thing where I pass in a pet object and it will automatically render it with um, like its equipment and all these things. So let's see that that works. Um, load, load, loading, bonk. That doesn't look right. <laughs> doesn't look right in a lot of ways. That's, uh, yeah, so I, I think what the problem there is, if I recall, I'm not going to do this permanently, but I think it needs to be position relative or something. Really, that should probably be wrapped up in the... Um, component so I don't have to remember to do that outside. Yeah, that fixed it. Um, mostly. <laughs> Probably, I think this container div is just like huge is the problem. Um, yeah, that's really funny. Uh, that's an interesting... Let's see what this is inside. I don't know if this is the time I want to fix this. Um, yeah, this doesn't have a container div. Why not? Why did I do it this way? Let's um, let's do that. I don't know why. Oops. Also, I don't know why that indents so much. Um, let's just try this. So, position relative, uh, width one inch, height one inch. Let's see. And I've decided, I don't know. Also, this is another thing that I don't know if that's how reasonable humans should do it. I've tried to specify a lot of things in terms of inches. Okay, this is working now. Um, because I want the display to be consistent, whether you're on a phone, whether you're on a computer. I mean, it's about what your eyes will physically see. I mean, you could make arguments for centimeters, but I guess what I'm arguing against is pixels. Um, 
And actually, I've made this mistake earlier. I was talking about how I was looking up um, what are the minimum widths of um, a lot of devices, phones. Uh, and the minimum, minimum width seems that, that, that you can expect a phone to have seems to be 480 pixels. So it's like, ah, 360 pixels. Who needs to, because that's what we cater to at work is 360 pixels. And it's like, that's nonsense. Why 360? The minimum width of phones seems to be 480. But the reason that it comes out to be 360 is because it's divided by two on these double density devices like any modern phone, even the Android ones. I think Apple started that, right? Um, so even though your phone might be 720 pixels wide, it only comes through as 360 pixels because when you say a pixel, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah but my pixels are double, right? So another reason to, to maybe use inches when possible. Uh, I don't, but then again, I don't know. No one, I've never seen anyone online recommend using pixels. Everyone was like, yeah, I use EMs and things. Um, or no one says uses inches, right? Everyone says, yeah, don't use pixels, use EMs. Uh, but I've never seen people talking about using inches. So I don't know, again, I may have made a weird choice there that that other people would say was a horrible mistake. Um, but that's what I've been doing. So anyway, now that I changed that, I just want to make sure that other places where pets are displayed still work. Um, since I changed, you know, wrapped these things up in this div like this, um, I might also put this into the CSS, I, inline styling. It's interesting, inline styling is another thing that gets a terrible rap. People are like, oh, don't do it. But when you have everything like components like this, like, okay, there's a lot here, so it makes sense. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I just see a lot of cases now where it's like, why would I make a whole class for that? Like, I, this is a, an individual standalone component. Just give it the styling it needs. Um, but this is probably why, honestly, because you're not going to do all this nonsense on a, on a um, you know, inline. Um, but, but anyway, uh, so this all looks right. I want to look at the directory and make sure that pets on my profile still look right, because that's another place where they're displayed. Um, great. Everything is still looking good. I don't know why they flicker like that. That's something I've wondered about, but we'll solve that another time. Um, so pets are looking good here. Let's go back to the park and we can remove this. Um, and we shouldn't have the crazy pet <laughs> spirit companion flinging itself across the whole screen. And Yeah, great. Um, so here are your pets. Now you should choose what kind of park event you want them to be in. Um, I will do that in a couple ways. So there's the pet appearance. Yeah, we're going to have the thing where you select... Um, what is the park event type? So I think that's just going to be an option. Um, I can always get, is it, no, it's select. I always get that backwards. You put options inside of selects, not selects inside of options. In my mind, it's ambiguous. Um, so we want to tie that to a variable. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not interesting. I was like, oh, this is weird. It's some data that isn't associated with a pet. Wait, no, it is. Every pet needs to know uh, what park event it's going to be in or wants to be in. So, and I've already done this part, which is why I'm opening the database here. Here are all the rows for the pets. Um, what is the park event type that it wants to be in? And what's the last time it was in a park event? And the reason I want to know the last time it was in a park event, uh, and I don't know if you heard the cat jump up again like 10 seconds ago, but she did. Um, I don't want, there needs to be some limit, right? I mean, and again, uh, yeah, whatever. I think I rambled more about limits in the in the last video and possible ways that I might let people like break through limits and just have a crazy different experience. But um, anyway, right? I don't want you signing up your pet for an event every five seconds and getting bajillions and oodles of experience. There's got to be some kind of limit. I figured for now I'll start with just once a day. Every pet can participate in an event, you know, in a given day. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to store the last time. If they've already signed up for an event recently, we won't list them. Uh, and then park event type you'll select, right? So what I was getting at was where are we going to put this variable of what park event do they want to be in? Um, we're going to put it right here. Uh, the pet will have it. And if we go to the serialization group, so here's where we get into data being passed between the API and the front end. Check out the entity. The pet, yep, has a variable called park event type, park event type that is part of the serializa serialization group my pet. So the my pet serialization group needs to have that property on it. We are going to add uh, last park event, which though it is a date time from the API comes through as a string. Like I would love to be able to say, no, 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 no it's of type uh, date or whatever, um, but that doesn't work unfortunately. Um, and then I'm sure there's some crazy, I could probably figure out something, whatever. Um, park event type is also a string, and that's the important one. And these are nullable. They're always going to come through. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, 
So we'll tie it to the pets park event type and then it should be good. So the values, the possible values are, and this is something where probably I'll want it to come, whatever. We're gonna say none. You could say I don't want my pet to participate in any park event um, or uh, kin ball. And as I mentioned, I think somewhere, I think on the on the uh, news for poppy seed pets, kin ball is the first sport I'm implementing. Um, let's find Kinball on Wikipedia. Um, it is an interesting Canadian sport with an enormous ball that you smack around and three teams that play simultaneously. It's very interesting. I, I downloaded like the PDF rule book and watched some videos of a Canadian dude explaining it how to how to play it to like some elementary school students or something. Um, and yeah, you can see Canada wins all the tournament tournaments. But Japan is really interested as well, and a little bit of France and Belgium. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's the first park event I'm going to start with in the game. So probably in the future, I'll want that data to come back from the API. Like the API should say, oh, front end, here's all the types of park events that are, you know, that exist or that are valid. Um, but for now, I'm just going to hard code it. There's only one. Uh, I don't know. That seems even more boring than what I'm doing maybe to, <laughs> to uh, share. I don't know. Well, I don't know. If you're watching, then you must not find this too boring. I don't know. Um, so these are the, the event types I'm thinking of making. Starting with Kinball, definitely want to do these three next. And then these are other interesting ones. I'm like, oh, that would be fun to do. Actually, and I should probably do the, like the Tri-D Chess or the Tri-Dimensional Scrabble, um, one of the like mental uh, competitions before I do a bunch of physical ones. So I'll probably move one of these or these two up or something. Um, and then pole vaulting, I don't know. I, I, like, I really want to do weird ones, and pole vaulting, I don't feel like is that weird, but, like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't want to do, like, football, baseball, soccer. I mean, I probably will eventually, but I was like, let's do, you know, it's poppy seed pets. Let's do weird shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Sepik Takra um, was actually the, the, the thing that I learned about first that set me on this path. Um, I was watching an anime with my friend... I don't remember what it's called, it's like something my life, I don't know, some silly comedy slice of life-ish nonsense anime. Um, and someone just reads a note that's like, oh, I'm off playing Sepik Takra or whatever, however you say it. And I was like, what in the world is that? Did they make that up? But then they show like a picture in the anime of like some some dude like kicking a ball over a net or something. I was like, what? Wait, is this real? <laughs> and then looking up, I was like, oh my god, it's real. I have to put that in Poppy Seed Pets. So anyway, that's what set me down this path of doing let's say weird sports, although maybe that's not very nice to people who actually play these sports. Um, uh, uncommon, maybe, we should say. Uh, so anyway, Kinball. I wanted to know what the value of it, it's the value I'm keeping is just the actual word description. That might not be a great idea for various reasons, but let's roll with what I've got for now. Um, so pick your, pick your type. Let's see what that looks like. Fantastic. None are Kinball. So what's interesting to me is that it should be blank, but for some reason, it's possible that the value is, is technically a null. Yeah, it's null. I wonder if you can do that in uh, see if uh, Angular will let us say, well, the value is actually null. That's the value I want you to match. OK. I don't know. So I was going to put this like on the side, because I probably am going to want the pet name. I don't know. We're going to want some explanation, but honestly, maybe this is fine. Or like do them in a grid like at home. Maybe we'll just line them up like grid style. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. Um, what I am worried about is that this isn't actually going to save anything. So when I reload the park, this data hasn't been put into the database. And we can see there's a wonderful place to put this data, right? <laughs> so we've been operating on. So let's, let's store it there. Um, I think the moment you select, I'm just going to push that up. There's no reason to wait for you to press apply or whatever just like the moment you select something just do it so um, that should be changed then we'll say do change um, I don't know, change selection let's say and we want to do it for this pet and we want to do it that's it we just need to know the pet because the park event type will be in there okay great let's make this function it's going to reload in the background here because it always does um, and this takes a pet, which we already know is of type my pet serialization group for extra IDE help and type hinting goodness. Um, we just want to update that. So that's the thing that now we're going to have to program something on the back end. I don't have any way actually to let you change that data in the database, so we'll have to make that thing. Um, I have a park controller. 
with nothing in it. So let's make a new function. Um, it's going to be a public function. We'll call it sign pet up for, or let's say um, change pet park event type. Sure. It really doesn't matter what we call it here happily. Um, what does matter is what we call the URL, which we indicate with route. Um, so this is just some symphony stuff. Um, the URL is composed, like the whole class, everything in here is going to be slash park, and then within that we're going to have slash, um, let's just say sign up pet or something, and then we want to know which pet to sign up. So we'll take a pet as a pet. Do we want to take the pet that way as an object, the pet's ID? I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, and then request, request. Um, well, sorry, so what was I talking about there? I should talk about my thinking. So there's two ways that you could pass data um, for a post request, ha ha ha, which by the way this is because it changes data. I've talked about this before. If you are changing data, it's a post request or a put or a delete, but I'm being lazy not using those. I'm only using get and post. Um, laziness, I don't know, whatever. It's not uncommon. Is it good or bad? I don't know. Uh, to not use the full range of, of HTTP actions. Um, so there's two ways that you could pass data for a post request. You can pass it through the URL, obviously. I mean, this is data that gets passed. What is the URL? And you can pass stuff in the actual form request object, which doesn't go in the URL, right? And, and whatever. I've talked about this before, so I won't demonstrate things now. Um, so I was just trying to think, like, should the pet be posted as part of the form data, or should it be in the URL? Um, the way that it should be thought about, and which I try to think about, but it's just I don't, like, think this way... It's not like built into the way I think, I guess. It's not second nature or something. Um, but URLs should point to a resource. They are, it's a, what is it, like a uniform resource location or something? Is that what URL stands for? I've probably got that wrong somewhere. Um, but it, it identifies some resource on the internet. And that's, I mean, it's in interesting because this was defined like, I don't even know what decade, right? It's earlier than the 80s, right? When was it? When did the internet start? That's the thing I should know as a computer scientist. I forgot. I'm sorry. History, I don't memorize these things. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's so interesting because they defined all this stuff so long ago. And then there was just like decades where no one cared. I, like, like all the 90s and, and even early 2000s, I feel like it was just nonsense. And people were doing things in all kinds of crazy, wacky, wrong ways. Um, and then only recently, now we're like, oh, yeah, remember what the original specs were? <laughs> decades ago, they were correct and we should be using them. It's, it's very interesting to see how that's changed over time. So anyway, um, the question is, does does the URL, if I include the pet, refer to some specific... Because here's the other way you could do. You could say, oh, well, if you could do the pet in the URL, why not put the event type in the URL, right? And just let, the, let it pass in through the URL. It's like, well, that's not really a thing that exists, right? There isn't like an event type within the pet or something, but the, but the pet is a, is a thing, it's an entity, it's something that exists if you want to think about it that way. And maybe a way that would help me is like, if there's an entity class for it or something, maybe that's like a good rule of thumb for when it goes in there. So anyway, the pet is absolutely a resource that exists on the internet that you can interact with, right, using these URLs. Um, and then we're going to change a property of that pet here. Um, for re and then for that kind of reason, you might say, oh gosh, shouldn't it go in like the pet controller? Um, there's already a lot of stuff that has to do with managing pets in the pet controller, updating their notes, equipping them, unequipping them. I don't know. Maybe, yes, maybe it should go in here, but I feel like the park event is a, is a pretty separate concept. Like the park, the park is a thing. It's its own whole system. So let's, um, let's manage the pet's interactions with the park there as well. I, mean, I could see arguments for throwing in the pet data. I could also see that argument I just said mean that maybe the fact that a pet is in a park event shouldn't be part of the pet. Maybe it should be part of some park event entity or something, right? I mean, whatever. As always, there's a bajillion ways you could do like anything. So whatever. I was going to swear there. I was cutting myself. I was like, well, will I say frickin' instead? It's like, no, let's just not say anything. There's a bajillion ways. <laughs> Bajillions and bajillions uh, of ways to do things. And this is one. Is it the best? We'll find out in the future when it breaks horribly or when it doesn't. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, let's get the park event type out of the um, the request that's going to come through on the form, which is on request, yeah, whatever. That name never made sense to me, but fine. It is what it is. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll call it park event. Yeah, I'll just call it park event type. It's called park event type. And it's an empty string. And I'm going to be nice and trim it. 
Um, there's another principle in web, in, actually in any kind of API, whenever you have two different systems talking to each other, the rule is that when you talk to someone else, you be as strict about the standards as possible, but when you hear a message from someone else, you be as like kind of forgiving as possible. So like, strictly speaking, you should be asking for kinball, not kinball space, 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 space. But if for whatever bananas stupid reason, you know, maybe there's reasons why in your code it was easy to accidentally have a space. Maybe you meant to do this and you did this. <laughs> Let's make the back end be nice and be like, you know what, spaces, I got you. You, I know you didn't mean them. They couldn't possibly have meant anything else, right? Let's just trim off the spaces and and then and then we'll accept that you meant kinball when you said kinball space space space. But when I talk to you, for sure, I'm going to say kinball, not put spaces, <laughs> right? But when you talk to me, eh, we can be loosey goosey. Um, so anyway, so that, that's another that's one of those interesting principles. Um, so we're doing that here. Park event type, yes, we'll be a little, for, a little forgiving. That being said, once I've done this forgiveness here of trimming off the, the spaces on the end, you had better have given me a valid event type. So let's check that. So we're going to say if the event type enum, uh, let's see. So, all right, so I made the, these little, I kind of talked about this in a previous video. I made these helper functions. PHP doesn't have enums built in. I made a way for me to do enumeratory types of things in PHP, even though PHP doesn't have that as a concept. Other languages like C-sharp do. I don't know, I've got great things and bad things to say about all languages. PHP, this is where I'd say a bad thing. is like, ah, oh, just give me a numerator. So anyway, I've, I've got a thing to kind of help me out to pretend like I've got a numerator. So anyway, if this wasn't a valid type of the park event enum, which again, right, if it's not one of these, if you didn't give me one of these, then get out of here. <laughs> um, so we're going to say that was an unprocessable entity uh, exception, and I'm curious to show you what kind of kind of why I use these things. So um, let's search for unprocessable entity. Um, the server understands the content type of the request entity and the syntax of the request is correct, but was unable to process the contained instructions, right? Um, so I kind of made my own kind of inference that this would be the sort of thing I'd return. I think I saw other descriptions that made a kind of made me think more that that was appropriate for this. That it was about like bad form data. The request was well formed, but was unable to be followed due to semantic errors, right? So now I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And let's see, I'm curious now, what does the RFC 4918 have to say about it? Um, oh gosh. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure I've looked at this before. If you're, if you are good in, I don't know, if you were going to be a perfect programmer, you would read all of the RFCs that have ever been put out. Um, you could probably go mad doing that. Um, the server understands the content of the request entity, so unsupported media type is inappropriate, and the syntax, so 400 would be inappropriate, but was unable to process the contained inst instructions. For example, it could occur if an XML request body contains well-formed XML, but it's semantically er erroneous. Sure. So yeah, so I would say that's appropriate, right? It's like, yeah, I understood what you said. You gave me a string. I wanted a string, but it wasn't valid. It was right. It wasn't well formed. So we're going to say unprocessable entity, right? And then I, again, I looked this up at one point and convinced myself that this was an appropriate response code for these sorts of situations. Um, I'm like using it all over the place at work too. And maybe someone's going to tell me, ah, Ben, you're crazy. That's not what it's for. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to use here. You gave me wrong park event type, and I'll go ahead and spit that back out at you um, if you do that. So we'll say park event type in quotes, is not a valid park event type. Get out of here. So, and you may note, if you've been super observant and not nodding off through this 33 minutes so far of coding, um, <laughs> is that, I don't know why I act like this. Again, if you're watching this, you must find it interesting, right? So I shouldn't say these self-deprecating things or whatever. Um, you could, in theory, sign up your pet for a game of Sepik Takra by not, and again, I really hope I'm saying that properly, by not using right here, I'm only going to give you the option Kinball, but on the back end, hmm, you're allowed to do any kind of park event type you want. Well, you can, but I'm never going to process them you know, when I go through and run park events, I'm only going to run the supported park events. So if you cheat like that, you only screwed yourself and you haven't inconvenienced anyone else. So I'm okay with it in that case. Um, so it's fine. I mean, you might make the same argument and say, well, then why not just let them do anything? It's like, well, eventually they will all be. Or you know what, you know what I should do? This is what we should do. We should say, those aren't available yet. Those are not valid park event types. There. You can only say kinball. 
which now really means why even ask? Because we're going to do more later. We're planning for the future. Um, okay, so, but you have done that. Then we're going to, ooh, another check. Uh, so, you should only be able to sign up a pet for a park event if you're currently logged in. Right now, this URL as written, you could just sign up anyone's pet for any park event you wanted. That would be a problem. Uh, ooh, excuse me, I don't know where hiccups came from. Um, so, I never remember how exactly to type this stupid line, so I just copy-paste it. Um, and there isn't a way that I'm aware of to shortcut that somehow. I guess I could make my own annotation. Eh, whatever, this is fine. Let's use the built-in one. Is granted. Okay, this re means this route will throw you some kind of error. I don't remember, probably a 403. I don't honestly remember, but it will throw you some kind of error if you access it without credentials that you know authenticate you as a user, like, oh, you are actually Ben or something. You're not just an anonymous rando on the internet. Um, but the other check we need to make then uh, is to make sure, so we'll get the current user now that we know we have one, thanks to that annotation. Um, we need to make sure that you're requesting to do this only for a pet that is a pet you own. So only if the pet's owner is the current user. Checking by ID. I think I can technically check equality on the objects because of sneakiness that Symphony and Doctrine does. I don't know. I'm not sure. So I'm going to check by ID because that for sure will work. Um, so anyway, if the owner doesn't equal the current user, then we need to get out of here again. So we'll show, throw, um, let's, and I talked about this before, right? Like, do you say access denied or whatever? Yeah, I'm going to say access denied. Um, uh, this is not your pet. Uh, reload and try again. Um, so I'm saying this because it's conceivable. I don't know in the future. If, if, like, if it was items, I think I talked about this in the previous video, but if it was like you were working on some items, but maybe you had the item up for sale, so from your point of view, you had the item and you like tried to prepare a recipe on it, but then the item vanished because it was sold, I would want to give you a message that's like, uh, you know, your data is out of date, basically. Like, reload. Reload the page, and then we'll have fresh up-to-date data, right? Um, there's currently no way for pets to move around from account to account, but I'll probably do that at some point in the future. Um, so... I don't know. Again, thinking ahead a little bit, uh, just tell them to reload. Or maybe the app just got in some weird banana state somehow. I don't know, you know? So whatever, just tell them to reload. Um, I could go further and be like, if the problem persists, blah, 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 contact me. But I, I'm not going that far, apparently. I don't know. Um, arbitrary, honestly. Well, <laughs> why I'm doing one of those two things and not the other. Um, so let's make sure we've checked everything. Do we have the park event that's valid? Yes. Is the pet owned by the user who's asking? Yes. That's all I think I need to know. Um, I guess you would say, has the pet participated in an event already today? I don't think I do care because if you kind of want to pre-sign up your pet and be like, yeah, when it can participate, I want it to participate in Sepik Takra. Um, did I even get the letters right? That name is infinitely confusing to me. Sepik Takra. You know, let's, let's look it up. Sepic. Yeah, see, I've looked it up before because kick volleyball. Incredible. How do you say it? I don't know. Uh, we usually got like little IPA, whatever, you know, go oh, accents, and here's how you say it. The melee word for kick, takra, is the Thai word for a woven rattan ball. What's a rattan ball? Oh my god. Therefore, it means to kick a ball using two different languages, merged into one. Well, we don't have anything that tells us how to say it. Also, I don't think my browser knows quite how to display. Oops, I was trying to zoom in on those letters. Or they, like, does it not know how to display some of these symbols? <laughs> we got like dotted circles? I don't know. Anyway, that's what it is. Um, and I don't know how to say it any more than I did before. Um, so whatever, let's go back here, we'll set the pet. So anyway, what I was saying was, even if your pet isn't eligible to participate in the park event, that's fine, we'll take care of that elsewhere. You can pre kind of register your pet for some kind of um, park event, fine. Uh, is the park event type, then we need to flush, we were telling uh, Doctrine Symphony, uh, hey, actually commit this to the database, this change. Um, and then we're going to return, and I need something else for that. I need my response service, which I use to return consistent responses from all um, different types of events. Just return a success, done. Um, and then over here, we will 
do that. So when you've changed selection, great. Then we will say this API, and this is a post request. We're going to go to park slash sign up pet, and we're going to do the pets ID. Uh, and then we need some data. We need the park event type, which I believe we called park event type. Yep, camel casing. I try to do camel casing all the time. Um, park event type. Just again, doesn't matter what you use, just choose a standard and stick to it so that you don't get confused and be like, oh, is this one where it was camel case or where it was snake eyes or whatever you call it with underscores? You know, it's like, just pick something and stick with it, at least within certain domains. Sometimes some things will require you to do it one way or another. And so you're like, okay, when we're doing it over here, you know, like in the database, okay, doctrine is going to turn my camel case things into underscores, I know. Um, so whenever I do plain SQL, I'm doing underscores. In some cases, that's actually helpful. You're like, oh, different standard. I must be in a different world. Maybe that's useful. Um, I would, though, honestly just prefer that it all be the same camel case. But whatever, it's not. Um, that's the one place where it's underscore, whatever. Everywhere else, keep it camel case. Great. Um, so anyway, pet park event type, right, which has been previously set. This, this whole magic, this ng model magic from Angular is just like, yeah, as you select things, just update this value. Or if that value somehow is updated by magic, just, you know, update the selection appropriately. So whatever, it, it all works. It's great. Um, and then let's do what will happen on success. On success, we don't need to do anything. Um, on error, I would be curious. <sighs> I think it's already okay on error. So let's do something. Let's let let's test it out. Let's see what happens. Um, I think I can subscribe and don't have to do anything. I can just be like, yeah, you change it, great, eh, go. Um, but let's let's try something. So if I do an invalid type, like what if I do archery, which I had been using as an example before, even though it's not even anywhere in the uh, uh, in that enum, but it also becomes out. So if I choose kinball, it should just work, and we should be fine. Um, that says all sorts of fun things about service workers and stuff because I'm running locally, but okay, but here we go. Sign up pet, it worked. We got a success, it returns a user object, whatever, it always does that. But if we select archery, archery is not a valid park event type. Great. That is, it's already handled. That, that was another thing. That's I've talked about that before, but the, the whole reason that I have like this custom class for handling response objects um, is that they're standard so that anywhere, it doesn't matter what response anywhere in the game, if any response ever turns an error, you will always see it here on the bottom because there's a standard, <laughs> right? And we follow it. Um, so the wonderful advantages of standards. Uh, we can sign up for Kinball. What would be nice to do is if for some reason there was an error, if we reverted it back to the old one, that would require more trickery than I care to deal with right now. That would require more trickery. So we're not going to do it. Um, let's just let you sign up pets for Kinball. When this reloads now, because I selected the kinball, he should be, it should remember and be like, oh yeah, he's set for kinball. He's set for kinball. Um, and if I do none, and then let's, I don't know, go away and then go back. He's still set to kinball. Does it not push the none through? It doesn't. It wouldn't, would it? Because on the back, we said it has to be valid. Yeah, what happens when we do this? Null is not a valid park event type. I agree. I super agree. So here's the other thing we want to say. Um, if the park event type isn't null, if it's not null and it's not a valid type, then get out of here. But null should be allowed through, right? If you said null, okay. But if it's not null and it's not valid, then it's, it's really invalid. Um, so let's check both those cases. Let's check if that works now because I do want you to be able to unsign up. All right, so he's going to be, they're both going to be kinball. Did those finish up? I think so. Okay, go back to none. Null is not a valid park event type park event type. Oh, because it's a string. Oh, how does that even work? Okay, let's try something. var dump um, request, whoops, request, request, get park event type. Because if it's missing, it turns it into a string. Hmm, is that true? Let's see what happens. Um, it's a string of null. Why does it go through as a string? Park event type null. Hmm, that's not what I want it to do at all. And it should go through as a literal null. Like, like, so what, this shouldn't have quotes on it. Like, this should be, this request payload, uh, shouldn't have, it should be like that. It should be a literal null value throws it as the string null, and I don't know why. 
That's very interesting. Let me check a thing. Um, let's see at what level it's happening. So let's uh, console log the pet when you change it, and let's see what um, what value we have there. Yeah, it's interesting. Usually you don't pass nulls around. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Console. Park event type is the string null. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Value, and I gave it a literal null. That's why I did square brackets. So square brackets means treat this thing as like JavaScript code rather than as a string. Um, so it would be identical to if I did this and put this in quotes. And I was like, no, no, no the string kin ball. Um, but I'm like, why type four extra characters? And I can type four less. And mostly I'm only going to use strings for these anyway. Um, but I just wonder if that's what's confusing it. I mean, let's do something stupid and see if that works. Um, I like, I don't know. To my mind, that shouldn't make it any better, but I'm wondering if it will. So if we go to none. Yeah, string of type null. Maybe it's because I that we told it that the data type is string um, in the pet serialization group. Park event type. I forget if you do at the beginning or the end. It varies, or I guess you do it here. Let's see what happens with this. Or maybe we just on the back end have to say, hey, if it's a string null, treat it like it's the value null. I don't know. Well, let's see if this makes it any better. Um, park event type undefined. Oh, because also why is it the string undefined? Why is it turning into a string? I mean, okay, I was a little surprised that that was going to work, honestly, because usually when you have options, right, in traditional HTML, you can't assign things bananas weird values, right? Um, like, they always have to be strings. It's always interpreted as a string. So I was a little surprised, like, oh yeah, it looks like I can just do a value here, um, like, a, like an actual JavaScript value. So... I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. Um, I guess on the back end, I should just accept an empty string to mean null. Um, we can do that. If park event type is an empty string, then park event type is null. I guess that's the way to do that. I mean, we are right here. We're saying if it's not here, it's going to become the empty string, and then we're trimming it, which is going to further cast it to strings. We've kind of forced everything on the back end into a string and not a null. Um, but we want we want to allow null. Um, so I mean, there's other ways we could do this, I guess. So fine, we could. And I think the default for get is to be null. So the default is null. So here now we can get nulls. I guess we would say um, if is string park event type then park event type equals trim park event type. If you gave me a string, then trim it and allow nulls to be passed in, but that's something else. We also want to an empty string. Again, especially if we're going to be, play forgetting, right? Like, oh, I, I want a null, but I understand what you mean by an empty string. You mean null. But I would like to also support null straight up. And I guess the way to do that is just to do what I was doing before. like. We're already going to want to accept an empty string as null. This turns a null into an empty string anyway. So we kind of normalize the data in a way here. It feels a little jangy to me. This isn't like the happiest solution in my mind, but eh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say that that's good enough. And then we just say value of an empty string, but we were having a problem with that because, yeah, see, that was the time when it did work. when. When it's null on the back end, right? Let's set this back and I'll show you what I mean because I seem to remember. Um, so this is taking now and probably setting it to null. But when I load, as I recall, because null doesn't em equal an empty string, yeah, we get this weirdness. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it, uh, that's weird. Why? It's interesting that Angular will understand this and properly assign, right, it will properly select the right thing. When it reloads, now it's going to select this because the value is null, but when it assigns the value back in, it doesn't assign null, it assigns the string null? Like what? That seems like an inconsistency on Angular's part. 
now I'm disappointed in Angular <laughs> because I feel like it should take take care of that. I wonder if you can specify multiple possible values. That's wacky. I don't know what to think about that. Um, I think what I'm inclined to do is say if pet park event type is the string null, then pet park event, this is so dumb. If it's null, make it an empty string, and then on the back end we're like, if it's the empty string, then it's null. It's like, why didn't we just pass null through? Well, because we want to be able to accept both here. It just seems like we're duplicating our efforts in a st stupid way. Although I partly blame Angular for being weird about how it's handling null here. I don't know. We're doing what we can with what we got. <laughs> uh, so let's see how this works. Uh, let's make sure this works in all cases. So let's go to Kinball, uh, and let's reload. And Roy should have Kinball, and Malik should have none. And then let's change him back to none. That's not exactly what we wanted to see, uh, because it changes it. I change it to an empty string here. OK, let's do this a different way. If the park event type is null, then pass null. Else, pass the pet park event type. There we go. Don't change the value. Just change how you pass the data. That, that will do what we want. Um, that's getting a bit long. Um, data. And just when it gets to this point, you've got like this long nonsense. I mean, this is already going to be long, but okay. Here's our data. Park event type. If it's the null string, then pass the value null else, right? So without modifying the value in place, right? Because when I was modifying it in place, we were seeing what we just saw, where it was like, I set this to none. Oh, that's the string null. Therefore, I set it to an empty string. But then this isn't set to find empty strings. So that's why it went to a blank, right? I don't know if you noticed that before, if I went too quick. Um, but it was setting this back to a blank because there is nothing with the empty string. This is bizarre. I 100% blame Angular for this. <laughs> Although maybe that's not fair. Maybe there's a better way to do what I'm doing. Maybe, maybe this is why you use like material, uh, material, Angular material, whatever components, because they probably handle that kind of stuff better. Um, I would guess. I don't know for sure. Um, but anyway, I believe this is working. So let's set Malik to Kinball. Let's set Roy. Let's set him back, and let's see what we got. Weird. Nulls, making things complicated. Um, but I don't know. That's pretty minor. I'm pretty happy with that. And this could be in line, but again, just for readability. Um, have it be separated out so we can easily see that we're doing nothing with the subscription rather than having it scroll off the edge. This this little line is something that is configurable in PHP Storm. You can say how wide before, like like just where do I put this line basically? And I think it will do some word wrapping if you tell it to. You can be like, oh, word wrap if it gets longer than X number of characters, where X is you know this. I think like super traditional, you would say 80 characters because back in ye olde DOS days. Um, 80 characters was the width of, of a screen in text mode or whatever. Um, but, you know, that was a long time ago. And now we have widescreen display and also our characters aren't as wide and whatever. Um, so I think this is like 120 or something now. Um, I mean, you can see how I could just make my, you know, I could be way wider than that. But I don't know. I, I, I've left their 120 thing there. I, I tend to cut off at that point. That's what they've chosen. It seems to work for me. And I run, I don't know if people have noticed this, I run a lot of stuff in a window. Because um, I feel like I'm always jumping around like this, um, so I almost never run anything full screen, uh, which is interesting. It's been interesting to see it work. Other people, um, a lot of other people, run all their stuff full screen, which just boggles my mind. Like one of the other programmers too. I was like, wait, what? Don't you? Aren't you always like going between fifty things? How do you? Well, you go down to these little dinky icons. I mean, to be fair, I'm on the second monitor. Whatever. <laughs> this is like UI opinions, right? Everyone has strong opinions about their user interfaces. Um, I think this is done. Well, I had an interesting little hookup with the nulls. Uh, hopefully that was a learning experience for you. It was, certainly was a bit of one for me. I'm surprised I haven't run into that before. Like, how is that even possible? Um, other little details I would want, you know, arrange them. I mean, let's do that. Let's arrange these in a, in a grid, as it were. Um, so we're going to make this a div. And I'm going to give it a class. I think it's, I think, honestly, pets just does it. As I recall, I already have stuff set up to align things in a grid. Yeah. Um, with much more space than is needed, though. Um, but yeah, it's trying to keep them to uh, 
right? Three columns, it probably will go to four. Yeah, four columns, three columns, two columns, one column for the different widths. Uh, but we don't need that much space. So actually reusing that pets class is less useful for me. Um, so let's just call it, um, I don't know, call it park event pets or something. Um, because that pets class is global everywhere because uh, there are places that I do want it. Um, like in, in a, well, gosh, are there? It might be that I really only use it at home. So it's possible that making that global was a mistake as we've just now seen here. Um, but let's go ahead with this. Uh, certainly no one else will use this logic. Um, so display needs to be flex. Uh, and the guys inside, I yeah, we, we want it to be a little wider than one because, because these drop downs are eventually going to contain much more. Um, oops. Uh, let's say that the width is two inches. Um, and then flex direction needs to be, it's a row. And then there's also a flex wrap. Um, and that's what will let us do a, oops, flex wrap wrap. That's all we need. Um, just grid things up immediately. Uh, let's see what this does. So if it's too wide, it'll just like wrap it if we go. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would want to do is that really two inches? Is separate these with, or sorry, not separate. Um, center them within. So, um, and possibly I don't know. It's kind of interesting. So I like it at home. You kind of have a natural. It's not. It's not a grid with lines, but you can see that there is a grid at play because of this white part. Kind of shows you what's going on. I mean, it's interesting how it. I don't know. That's it. I was just kind of playing around with the UI. I don't know if that's a great way to display it or not. Um, but you you have a sense of the of the space because of the text and everything else going on, and, and the the white area for when we're wrapping like this, right? But it's a little weird on the park when you just have floating pets. I don't know. Uh, those are the sorts of things I can play with later without bothering you. I think. Um, but let's uh, make. Do you? I don't think this. I'm thinking of grid. I always get grid and flex, and flex messed up. Um, there's a great site that. This is the one CSSTricks.com. Yeah, um, yeah. They have super awesome references for CSS grid, CSS flex. Um, grid is preferable, but less well supported by browsers, which is sad. Um, honestly, for poppy seed pets, I don't care. Like. It's like edge, you know, like, I don't know. I, again, I'm like tempted to swear, it's like whatever. Edge can GTFO, no one cares. <laughs> like, um, but, but anyway, uh, I don't know, but I'm in the habit of using Flex. It's important, again, when I at work, 10% of our users are still using Internet Explorer for God knows what reason. Um, so anyway, I think this is what I want, this justify content, right? I want to do some sort of space evenly. I think space evenly would do it. Let's try that. So this is, is this flex flow? This is shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap properties. No, justify content must be different. Justify content, yes, it's a totally different property. Sorry, I'm misreading that whole thing. Okay, so we wanna justify content. Doesn't start with flex, I never would have guessed. Um, and I think we want, let's try space evenly and see how that looks. It's actually called space evenly, okay. Uh, but this is why the site is so great because they give you these pictures where you, so you can just glance and be like, yeah, I don't want to start and end. That's for sure. Center, oh, that would I w might have thought center, but no, not quite. Uh, space between, maybe. Uh, space around, that's kind of interesting. I assume you get like this space is equal to you know half, right? If this divides it, right? You've got twice the space, twice the space, once the space. That would be like having a padding around the whole thing, but this does like an even to make actually each part even. So I think that's probably what I want, question mark. Let's find out. Oh, it already did it. It looks kind of gross just having them float here. Whatever. Again, that's something I can work on on my own. Also, why don't they take up the whole, what's going on there? Huh, interesting. Somehow this div um, width two inches. Uh, maybe we don't want a width of two inches. Yeah, actually, I guess that's it. We don't want to tell it what width to do. It will justify things accordingly. Hopefully that works on, so something that's not clear here is what happens when there's a second row with differently width things. Like, will they always line up in, in columns or will like, you know, if you had like two big things or whatever, I don't know, I'll, I'll find out. It's possible, I, I think this is probably not the display I want. Um, but whatever, I'm just gonna do this for now and I can clean that kind of stuff up on my own. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, that's very interesting, especially when we only have two pets. You kind of don't want them to just infinitely um, space out. Yeah, right. This is obviously gross, whatever. The point is I got the functionality down of going into things. So I'm going to clean up this UI on my own time. Maybe I'll make that a separate video, actually. You know what? I'll just keep going. I'll do that in a separate video where I play with the UI. Um, but we have the basics in. You can select a park event type for your pets. Um, again, this does not actually make those park events happen. That's something else I will do separately. Maybe I'll even do a different video for that. But we've already spent an hour just doing this. So, oh my goodness. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if this was interesting, oh my gosh, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, whatever all the polite words are to say. Um, and if you're interested in seeing, I don't know, how I decide to CSS this up, then I guess you can watch the next video. And if not, I don't blame you. You've been here quite a while already. Thank you again for watching and goodbye.